Also, I'm, I've got to put one more thing on the list here. I'm just going to put passion right there. And when I say passion, it's the old human passion, you know, what excites you, what gets you going. By the way, there's a huge drop in global passion, huge hmm. drop uh, amongst individuals, but if it's measured globally, passion is going like that. People don't know what to do anymore. You come over here on this side and you realize that passion is old fashioned. <laughs> I like that. Ah. Passion is old fashioned. You don't need that outer stimulation. You don't need those little triggers in you anymore. You don't really need uh, the word passion anymore. Now, I know it's been awful going, going out of your old passions. What am I here for? Why am I here? Shut up. Just. <laughs> Just, you don't, passion is a word that's going to disappear from your vocabulary, because you're not going to have to go looking for passion. You're not going to have to passionate yourself every few days. You're not going to have to – it's always there. You know, it's just the I am. I am living. Who needs to have all these passions, whether it's, uh, I don't know, coin collecting or uh, bike races or you know, whatever you do for your passion. Every moment is the passion. Uh, it's, but passion will go out of your vocabulary. So there's no really corresponding word over there. Who needs it when you're alive and conscious? Hmm? So officially today, well, I'm going to mark as uh, the, the day that the two worlds began. It's been in the making for a long time, but it's here. It's now. The biggest difference is going to be thinkers and knowers, mm. those who are still in their mind, still trying to figure out things in their mind. Not that the mind is bad, but it's maxed out. It's absolutely maxed out. Last month when we got together, I talked about fantasy and talked about a lot of these things, but I said fantasy is the way out. It's the way beyond. Fantasy, allowing yourself to go out beyond the mind into things that the mind would judge as being uh, undoable, unbelievable, uh, made up. Going into fantasy, which is as real as all of this, it's just real in a different way. Maybe not real in the physical, local, linear way, but it's still real. That leap into the beyond, beyond the mind, uh, and it's a big leap because the mind is scared shitless about it. The mind is like, what's going to happen? Shh. Mind, it's all natural. It's all natural. Dear mind, just as the body, every cell in the body has been waiting, holding a space for the light to come in, dear mind, so have you been waiting for this leap into Nost, the beyond. It's a different way of sensing, thinking. It takes us out of local linear into global exponential, into cosmic exponential. And it's not going to be the same platform. It's not going to be the same basis for reality. It's totally different. And we'll still be here doing this, and we'll still be able to sense with our human senses, but we're moving into something else. And the funny thing is, dear mind, the funny thing is, on this official date now – it's official because I said it and it's written. Once it's written, it's official <laughs> – on this official day of the recognition of two worlds on this planet, mm. the world of the thinkers and the world of the knowers, Dear mind, on this date, without any effort whatsoever, I'm going to allow myself in a very natural way just to be there. I'm not going to – mind, you're not going to be able to figure it out right away. It might not make any sense to you, but that's where we're going. And we're going there naturally. No force, no effort, no thinking. 
Dear Mind, on this date, December 5th, 2015, we're going to play some Christmas music. Some nice Christmas music. If you get that Christmas music ready. We're going to play some nice Christmas music. And we're just going to allow it naturally. What is it? That's how I wish you a Merry Christmas, but what is it? <laughs> this knowing. What, what, well, where is it? What does it do? Shh. You see, if you try to figure, can we get these lights down? This is a Marab, believe it or not. <laughs> Half everybody's already asleep. We had to do Marab. So, dear mind, we're not going to think through this. We're just going to allow it. Because, dear mind, if you start thinking, and then it's just mental, then it's really not knowingness. So we're just going to sit here in this very, very comfortable energy. Listening to some delightful Christmas music, and we're just going to go there. Well, actually, we're just going to let it come to us. There is no process involved in this. There's no thinking. There's no analysis in it. There is just allowing. There is no um, plotted way of doing this. It's just allowing. But you know, in a funny kind of way, you got nothing else right now. As I said, uh, the mind is at capacity. People talk about the challenges on this planet, uh, food and fuel and water, whatnot. The real challenge is that the mind really can't take anymore, nor should it. So now we birth the knowers. Let's make a good science fiction movie. The knowers versus the thinkers. We birth the, the knowers. And the funny thing is about them is that they live in the moment. They allow everything to flow to them. They don't have to think it through. It's an easier life because it's just there. They don't even have to think about it. And when I say there, I'm not just talking about some money or health or things like that. I'm talking about knowingness of the answers to big questions, the knowingness of how to solve big issues that have faced the individuals or the planet without thinking. It's a funny one, without thinking. You've been so accustomed to thinking through with very, very little infusion of creativity, but just taking a very logical path on things. So it's going to seem very odd being in this, well, being a knower, because it's just going to be there. People are going to say, well, how do you know? Well, because I'm a knower. <laughs> it's just there. Well, where do you get this from? It's just there. Yeah, no, you do not say, I don't know. <laughs> it's just there. Well, did you have to study for it? No, nope. it's just there. What kind of preparation do you do for it? None. It's just there. Can you teach me how to do it, they'll say? No. <laughs> You're going to think back your own journey to get to this point. What you thought started out, what you thought was going to be a spiritual journey, it's really not. It's just there. And my friends, the less you try 
the less you effort, the less you struggle with it, like a lot of you are doing right now, the more it's just there. It emerges. It comes forth. You do not have to go out and get it or earn it in any way. It's just there. You don't have to be smart. Matter of fact, it's better that you're not real smart. <laughs> Tends to get in your way. You don't have to make sense out of it. You know, in the old thinker way. Oh, the old thinker way. That was cumbersome. You don't have to worry about it fading away, like your mind is going to do anyway. That's what I love about thinkers. They think and think and think, and then they lose it all. Poof, goes away. We get older, memory slips. You know where they go? They start going into fantasy. They start going into that other world that's always been there. And then everybody says, well, look, they're going crazy. No. Crazy was being in the zoo. So the amazing thing, the real blessing is that you don't have to do a damn thing to get here. Other than just to allow this natural state, and again, your mind is going to say, "What well, did I get it? Did I get it, or was I asleep?" Shh, you got it. You got it. Well, but where is it? You'll see. You'll you'll see. It's gonna. Come up in a lot of interesting different ways. Some ways that will will surprise you, some ways that will confound you, some ways that are gonna make you really freaking uncomfortable because they're gonna break you from old routines. That's why I asked the question before. You go to this class of yours, you learn super advanced, more advanced software programming. But let's say it's like a blank screen. The entire time you're there, you don't comprehend a thing. It doesn't make sense. Oh no, what's wrong with me? Something wrong? No. No, because actually, as a knower now, you're still going to have the knowledge of software programming. Uh, you're just still there. But suddenly, Something changes. You're going to know code that is not zeros and ones. You're going to know code that's the universe, code that is consciousness and light. You're going to go beyond electronic software coding into true consciousness coding. That's a lot more fun. A lot more fun. And then all that software programming is, well, I'll leave that for the young ones. You know, leave that for the others, because you're going to be on to deeper, amazing understandings that go beyond the mind. So the mind, the mind of the planet, is maxed out. People are going to keep trying to use it, trying to better it. They're going to. Infuse it with chemicals and more thoughts and everything else, trying to stimulate it, trying to expand it again, a little linearly. That's not going to go very far. But for the knowers, the intuitives, the creatives, the nost, you suddenly leap to a whole different level. And, and you still 
have the mind, but it's not the dominating force anymore. Still have all the facts and figures and the memories and everything else, but they are not what is guiding your ship anymore. I'll tell you this right now, it's going to be, it is a little tough ad adapting to it because it disrupts. It's a <laughs> knowingness is a disruptive technology. <laughs> it disrupts. Uh, by the way, disruptive technology, I love them. They're going to change the world. They're all around you. But the primary one right now is the disruptive um, technology, but it's really a, a disruptive consciousness that comes into your life as a knower. That's going to be the hard part. It's going to change things in your life. But you know, by now, you're accustomed to it. Yeah, you, by now, you're professionals at it. So let's take a good deep breath, and with no force or effort. See, isn't that weird? It's like, well, how can you do something without force or effort? That's one of the first lessons, one of the first experiences, I should say, of a knower. It doesn't take force or effort. Remember our old world over here, force, power, effort, gravity, all the rest of that. The knower realizes making this type of exponential change takes no power. It doesn't take any energy, any force. Damn it, that's damn it, that that's a tough one in a way for some people. Not not for Shay. That's good. But for some, it's like, yeah, but I didn't feel anything. That's good. <laughs> That's really good. Because you're not supposed to. Feeling comes from the old physical senses. Feeling comes from the mind and the emotion. So no, you're not going to feel anything right away. We can fade down the music. Don't want you to get too much in the Christmas spirit here. So uh, that's a very interesting point, and we'll get on to one more thing. You expect to feel something, an electric charge going through your body, or those chills going up and down. You expect a biophysical response of some sort to think that it worked. And what you're going to realize as a knower is that you don't have to have that. Matter of fact, usually you won't get it. Ah, you're going to say, but, but, but then how do I know something happened? You know? Well, you're a knower. You just do. Well, here's what happens. There is no biophysical response to, uh, to that change, to the knowingness, to something that just happened, like right now, shifting from being thinkers to knowers. There's no real response. Other than that, I would say the biggest response you're going to get is just feeling a little tired. <laughs> A little dozy, you know, but that's the energy here today. But what happens is because there are, you could say, a probe going out from both your brain and your consciousness saying, Did something happen? Uh, we didn't sense anything. Uh, did something happen? So you're probing. That stimulates the new. Uh, well, the, 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 actually, the natural, but what's going to be for you the new sense, sensual awareness, the new feeling. You have, a, you have five physical senses in your brain, your body you've gotten used to, but suddenly it's going to stimulate real sensing. The, we could call it angelic senses or, or whatever, but they're your natural ability to perceive realities. And that's plural. If Linda wasn't – oh, Grinch is awake now uh, – your natural ability to sense realities. Would you write that on a new piece of paper? Just uh, your natural abilities to sense realities. Realities plural. It's going to reawaken that old, uh, what I would call very natural 
ability to perceive, to sense. Your natural? Abilities to perceive realities. So that's going to naturally wake up. And suddenly, you're going to have a weird – it's not even a feeling, it's not biophysical – you're just going to have suddenly a weird sensation. And it's going to be weird because it's not located in your body or really in your brain. There's just something going on. That's when you know you're awakening or reawakening that sense. That <laughs> sense. So let's take a good deep breath. I had a lot of talk, really a big distraction. What did you just do? He said, Okay, I'm willing to go beyond the brain. And I don't know what it is, but I'm okay with going there. With it. You okay with that? Yeah. Good, good. Okay. Let's take a good deep breath. Good deep breath. I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. And John, could we get um, just uh, regular Mirab music, not Christmassy? Let's take a good deep breath. And I want to acknowledge all of you who are going to naturally allow yourself to go from thinker consciousness to knower consciousness or I am consciousness. I want to acknowledge all of you who kind of knew that it was coming anyway. The biggest challenge. Uh, I see on this planet uh, is that the brain cannot comprehend what comes next. Technology or philosophy or challenges, the mind is not going to be able to handle it. There are those who then are going to try to get machines to do it, computers to do it. But you and I know that a computer is simply an extension of the mind. Then they're going to try artificial intelligence of computers, and that's not going to work either. But there's going to be a very small but amazing group on this planet who have gone, who have transcended being the thinkers. They're now the knowers. Now, I want to leave you with this on a very different note. There are tremendous changes taking place, and you're very aware of the ones that have been taking place within you, but tremendous changes that are taking place on the planet right now. Well, they have to do with freedom, they have to do with moving beyond the mind, which is part of the freedom equation. And what you're seeing on the planet right now is a resistance, resistance to higher consciousness, resistance to going out of the mental era. And resistance is natural. It's, it's a kind of result of the gravity of change. Anytime there is a change within a reality, it creates kind of a, a vacuum a gravity, a pull. So that's going on right now on your planet. You're seeing it and it's going to continue. You see it in terms of terrorism, in terms of religions, politics, banking. But my friends, these are all systems that are on their way out. They're not leaving gracefully, of course. They're trying to hang on to power. They're trying to hang on to their old ways of doing things. They're doing it through what you call terrorism, but what terrorism really is, is the instilling of fear, the undermining of conscious or confidence. They're doing it – and there's not really that many, actually. Uh, these terrorism acts that you see, these are, these are not nations that are fighting other nations. 
They're actually really not religions fighting religions. Sometimes it would appear that maybe it's a religious thing, but religions are the product of the mind. And when a mind tries to hold on to power, the easiest access point for resisting change, one of the easiest, is religions. Religions are all about power. They're all about mind. And so when a terrorist is looking for the, the, the venue, when the terrorist is looking for the dressings, how they do their work, it's easy to go to religion. It's easy to hypnotize people, to incite people, to do it under the banner of heaven. The terrorists really aren't religious. They're really not. There's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of hypnosis, but they're really not. They have no more consciousness than a grain of sand. But they're using this as their launching point, and what they're really doing is undermining trust. They're inciting fear. They're causing great distraction. They're causing they're causing people to now just focus on that. Talk about terrorist acts. How much of the conversation in the last month since we met, how much of the conversation on the news at the water cooler has been about terrorism? And they undermine it so, so beautifully. They undermine the very fabric of life. When suddenly it's your next door neighbor, that nice couple that was living next door to you, you didn't know they were making explosives to go out and kill dozens, hundreds of people. That's undermining. That is fear. That will cause neighbor to turn on neighbor. That will cause friends to become suspicious of friends. That will even cause families to question, to wonder about their own family members. It doesn't take much, you see. It doesn't take armies anymore. This is all ultimately about power, about the mind, about holding on to the old. This is all a resistance to freedom. One of the greatest tools that is used very, very effectively is hypnosis. In about ten minutes, a normal a person who is considered normal, a person with a regular job, a person who's tried to do good all their life, in ten minutes, a person can be turned into a terrorist, and they don't even know it. They do not even know it. Hypnosis works so well because the mind is linear and local. The mind is susceptible. The hypnosis works best when somebody is mental, I mean very much in the mind. Much easier to hypnotize somebody who is what you would call smart than the village idiot. Thank God for the village idiot. So when you hear about things like what's happened in Paris or San Bernardino, when you hear about airplanes suddenly falling from the sky, and all these other things, you wonder what's happening. There's a lot of hypnosis going on, and the hypnosis can be latent. It doesn't. It's not. Don't think in terms of the old uh, pocket watch. You know, you are getting sleepy. 
the methods to hypnosis are very refined and they're coming through all the time you just don't know it the hypnotic suggestions can be latent for years it's not unusual now to have a implant that was given 20 years ago and it is still as effective today when it is triggered a trigger could be a combination of sounds or words sometimes they're even uh, into mathematical formulas and <clears throat> into software programs and I say this because I want you to understand it's going to it can get very fearful out there and I know even as I'm saying this you're wondering oh my gosh was I was it me did I get hypnotized am I being hypnotized right now <laughs> hypnosis is a very scary thing and it's a byproduct of the mind of a mental society. That's why it's so easy. Who needs bombs? Who needs militaries when it's the neighbors who've been hypnotized? Suddenly the phone rings three times and it stops ringing. Suddenly the phone rings two times and it stops ringing. And then it rings once and all the signals are there. And that nice, happy couple down the street suddenly gone tactical. And right now, some of you are saying, Adamus, where are you going with this? This is frightening. Absolutely. But I want you to realize something. I want you to go back up here to, if you turn the page back, hypnosis only affects thinkers. It only affects the thinkers. It cannot touch one who's in knowingness. So if you're wondering, you're thinking, did I get hypnotized? Am I vulnerable to this? Once you go into, once you allow knowingness, no, no, you are not. You are not susceptible to it. Because the way this sense, uh, the true I am sense works, you cannot be limited by the linear. You can't. Once the sense really starts integrating into your life, there is a constant um, creative pursuit of uh, more answers, more potentials, more experiences. So once you go beyond linear and local and you're in the sense of the I am, it will never limit you to a hypnotic thought. The knowing is exponential. It grows, it feels, it knows in all ways. The mind is linear. That's why it's very easy to put a hypnotic plant into a linear path that continues going on a linear path. It doesn't explore, it doesn't naturally explore other realms. So that hypnotic implant stays. But in knowingness, you cannot be. You cannot be. So I wanted to point this out because, yes, it's going to be a crazy world out there. No, you don't need to worry about it for yourself, but the world is going to get crazier and crazier. We have a convergence of technology, of, uh, of the mental being maxed out. We have a convergence of an imbalance in the world of the haves and the have-nots. All hell is going to break loose in a very good way. See, right away, dear Linda Grinch, oh, no, no, my friends, I want you to take a moment. I want you to take this moment on this day of 
recognizing two worlds. It's not uck. It is wow. You're the knowers. You're the creative. What comes next? What comes next for you? Go beyond the linear now, right now. Let that knowing come in. What comes next for you? Off your linear path. What comes next for the planet? Beyond the linear path. Linear path would be yuck, but what comes next when you combine technology growing exponentially, when you combine it with consciousness, awareness, creativity, when you combine the mind maxing out, when you combine the desire of people for something better on this planet, now what? What comes from the knowingness, not from the mind? What's possible? Yes, change, disruptive systems, technologies, patterns, disruptive. But does it have to be bad in the old thinker way? Not at all. And that's where you come in. That's where the fantasy, which is not fantasy at all, that's where the knowingness, that's where the imagination comes in. All these disruptive technology systems, patterns, vibrations, does disruption mean destruction? Or does it mean evolution? Let's take a deep breath with that. And with that, my friends, always, always, always know that all is well in all of creation. Thank you, my dear friends. Thank you. So with that, I invite that we stay a moment longer and take the good deep breath to breathe in and feel those last potentials, those last statements of Adamus, to just let that really integrate with you. Take the good deep breath and allow. <laughs>